Hey guys, welcome back. This is a question I've gotten several times on the website and that's where should I feel pressure in the club shaft? So some people talk about when we're coming through contact, should I be feeling pressure with my right hand kind of pushing this club through contact? Should I be feeling pressure with my left hand kind of pulling the club through? You know, where should I feel in my hands the pressure be? Or you might also hear this, this kind of misconception that we should be very light on our golf swing and that's fine at a dress I want my hands to be very loose and relaxed on the golf, golf club, but as I come through contact, that's gonna really tighten up. I gotta put a lot more pressure into the club coming through contact. And let's go over what's really happening. So in a good golf swing, if I'm creating a lot of club head speed, let's say a tour average, I'm gonna be having some lag in the downswing. So basically I'm creating an angle between my forearm and the club shaft. And then to release that lag, I'm gonna be kind of slowing my hands down actually, believe it or not. I don't necessarily need to feel that, but I'm actually gonna be putting pressure up toward my shoulder. And if you're looking from the down the line view, it's gonna be going kind of behind my body. So it's going this way to get that club to whip on through there. So in my left hand, because my left hip and my left shoulder are kind of going back and up, my hand is going back and up and I've got this big angle. As I pull that way with my body, and that club is naturally gonna whip on through there. Now, the acceleration is happening so fast then, if we look at this club handle, what's happening is at the low point here, where my right leg, the butt end of this club is kind of moving up into the left. So I'm actually moving up, and again, that comes down to my left shoulder and my, my body moving upward and around. As that moves up, that really helps to accelerate the club and whip the club through contact. That's where you get a lot of speed from. Now, the bottom part of the grip down here it's gonna be releasing forward, and it's gonna be releasing forward really quickly. It doesn't turn up as much because it's lower on the grip, but it's gonna be releasing forward. Now, there's a lot of research out there, and some people believe, which I tend to agree with, that because the club is accelerating so quickly, the right hand can't really keep up. So if you look at players like Phil Mickelson or Vijay Singh, sometimes you'll see them as they come through impact, their right hand will barely just even be on the club. Their left hand will be on there firmly, and the right hand will almost be off the club just like that. It's just completely let go of the grip. And I would tend to say that that's a really good use of the body, the grip turning up, and that club head is accelerating so fast, they don't want to have a tight right hand or it's actually going to slow the club down. They could feel like they're letting go with the right hand and letting that club whip on through there. So the big key is, what I want to feel in these bottom three fingers, because my grip is turning upward, because my club head is really accelerating through very quickly, I want to feel these bottom three fingers have most of the pressure. And as I rotate on through, that's going to allow the club to whip right on through there. Because all I'm, I'm having is very at the very end of the grip, allowing that to come on through. If my right hand is on there tight, it's going to stop the club from accelerating as quickly as you would like for it to accelerate, or as quickly as it could accelerate. The right hand does add some pressure, in halfway into the downswing. So as I start my downswing, it kind of, the right hand really helps the club to get going, not by casting the club, but by feeling like the club kind of moves out this way and I get some lag. From there, it's gonna be more left hand. The feeling's gonna be more in the left hand through contact. So if I, I wanted to feel, where does my right hand feel in the golf swing? I'm gonna feel nice and soft as I go back. As I start down, I may feel a little pressure right here. As long as I'm getting some good lag and a good angle back wrist, that's fine. And then what would I feel through contact would be more my left hand, bottom three fingers, and getting my grip or my butt into the club to turn, to turn upward and accelerate that club as I'm coming through there. If you can get that type of sensation, you're really gonna hit some very long shots. So to answer the question, I'm gonna feel mostly my bottom three fingers coming through contact. And as long as I get that club shallowed out like we talk about in the move, that's putting my club in a position where I can really let it whip on through and get a lot of speed. So go ahead and try that out, get that same sensation, let the club get some lag and then release it. And in our website, we go over this a lot. If you're working on your power turn, your lag, and then getting that to release into your straight, straight line release. So that club is turning up as it's going into the straight line release. So let's go ahead and try one out here. Let's see what kind of swing speed we can get today. And uh, I'll tell you what I felt with my left hand. There you go, hit that one pretty hard. A Little bit of a cut there. I definitely felt like my right hand was letting go. My left hand had the pressure in the bottom. And we got about 
115, 114.8 club head speed. So go out there, work on that drill, guys. Get that club to lag and then turn that grip back up to get a lot of speed. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the I card and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 